In this presentation, intramedullary nailing of the femur will be demonstrated using the expert A2FN. The objectives of this exercise are to show the clinical indications, the pre-operative planning, the patient position and surgical approach, the insertion and locking of the nail, and implant removal. The indications for the A2FN include shaft fractures, subtrochanteric fractures, and shaft fractures combined with ipsilateral neck fractures. The entry point for the A2FN is located in the greater trochanter. The clinical indications determine the type of proximal locking used. Standard locking is used with 3, 2, A, B and C type fractures. Recon locking is used when there is a combination of 3, 2, A, B and C fractures with 3, 1, B type fractures when the 3, 2, A, B or C fracture site is close to the lesser trochanter or especially with subtrochanteric fractures. In this practical exercise, recon locking will be demonstrated. For fractures in the femoral shaft, standard locking is indicated. Two 5mm locking screws are used. The first screw is inserted in a transverse fashion. Another screw is inserted in 120 degrees anti-grade fashion. This oblique screw can be inserted through the incision used for the nail insertion. Recon locking is used for a femoral shaft fracture combined with a femoral neck fracture. Recon locking is also used when the fracture line is located near the level of the lesser trochanter. Two 6.5mm hip screws are used. The distal part of the nail is locked with two screws parallel to each other. When the fracture line is located below the isthmus, a third screw is inserted from anterolateral to posteromedial through the 25 degree locking hole to increase stability. In this practical exercise, distal locking will not be performed. To increase flexibility, both distal and proximal dynamization is available. An AP X-ray of the uninjured femur that includes a scale is obtained. By comparing the scale on the X-ray and that of the preoperative planner template, the surgeon is able to know by how much the X-ray is enlarged. The diameter and length of the nail are estimated. Digital X-ray images allow measurement of the length of the uninjured femur and the diameter of the medullary canal. Alternatively, the nail diameter and length can be estimated before or during the actual nailing procedure by using the radiographic ruler that is included in the instrument set. When using the radiographic ruler, the surgeon should take the enlargement factor into account. The X-ray beam must be perpendicular to the bone axis at each end of the bone. In this exercise, a nail of 9mm diameter and 340mm length is used. The patient is positioned in the supine or lateral position on a traction table. The supine position may also be used on a radiolucent table without traction. To open the femur, the following instruments are needed. The universal chuck with T-handle, two 3.2mm guide wires, the 17.0 3.2 multi-hole drill sleeve, the 17.0 protection sleeve, and the cannulated flexible 14mm opening drill bit. The 3.2mm guide wire mounted in the universal chuck with T-handle is inserted into the tip of the greater trochanter. In the lateral view, the guide wire must be on the longitudinal axis of the femur and centered in the medullary cavity. Any other position will place the guide wire either too dorsally or too ventrally, which would hinder the smooth introduction of the nail. In younger patients with strong bone or with the bone model for this exercise, it might be necessary to use a power tool to insert the guide wire. To check the insertion depth of the guide wire, a second guide wire can be laid alongside the first. If the position of the guide wire is incorrect, the multi-hole drill sleeve can be used to insert a second guide wire parallel to the first in a better position. The drill sleeve is removed.
The cannulated flexible 14mm opening drill bit is slid over the guide wire and through the protection sleeve down to the bone. The bone is drilled as far as the stop on the drill bit using a power tool. The drill bit, the protection sleeve and the guide wire are removed. The A2FN can be inserted with or without reaming. In this exercise, the bone model will be reamed. To ream the femur, the following instruments are used. A set of Synream reamer heads with the removal box, two 2.5mm Synream reaming rods, the radiographic ruler for expert femoral nails, the Synream flexible shaft, and the holding forceps for reaming rods. The reaming rod with bull tip is inserted. The tip of the reaming rod should lie in the centre of the distal femoral condyle. This will prevent a valgus or varus deformity at the fracture zone. To determine the nail length, another reaming rod of the same length is placed alongside the first. The excess is then measured to give the nail length. In this exercise, the nail diameter is 9mm, so reamer heads from 8.5mm to 10mm will be used in 0.5mm increments. The reamer head is mounted on the flexible shaft. and slid over the reaming rod. The holding forceps is mounted on the end of the reaming rod to prevent inadvertent extraction of the reaming rod. The reamer is advanced with gentle back and forth movements. The holding forceps are used to hold the reaming rod in place while the reamer head is exchanged. The medullary canal is reamed up to a diameter of 10 millimeters. Again, the holding forceps are used to hold the reaming rod in place. The instruments needed to insert the nail and prepare for recon locking are the hexagonal screwdriver with spherical head, the cannulated connection screw, the insertion handle, the appropriate A2FN, the connector for the insertion handle, the combined hammer and the aiming arm. The insertion handle is connected to the nail with the connecting screw using the hexagonal screwdriver with spherical head. It is important that the tongue of the insertion handle match the notch of the nail. The aiming arm is connected to the insertion handle before the nail is inserted to check that the aiming arm will guide the hip screws correctly through the nail. The three-part trocar combinations are introduced through the recon holes in the insertion handle. The trocars are removed. Two guide wires are inserted. If the guide wires pass correctly through the recon locking holes in the nail, the nail can be inserted. The guide wires along with the sleeves and aiming arm are removed. With the patient positioned supine, the insertion handle initially points towards the ceiling. The nail has spiral flutes on its surface to help rotational movement during insertion. When the nail is advanced into the bone, it rotates 90 degrees. The insertion handle now points to the lateral side. If the insertion cannot be completed manually, the connector is attached to the insertion handle. The slot nearest the nail should be used so that the connector lies parallel to the nail for easier insertion. The transmission of force is more in line with the nail when the connector is nearer the nail. This will help advance the nail with less effort. The nail is advanced with gentle blows of the hammer. The insertion handle itself must never be struck directly. The connector is now removed. To insert the recon locking screws, the following instruments are needed the 11.5, 8.5 protection sleeve, the 8.5, 3.2 drill sleeve, the 3.2mm trocar, the 3.2mm guide wire, the direct measuring device, the 4.5, 6.5mm reamer, the fixation sleeve, and the T25 star drive screwdriver. The aiming arm is attached to the insertion handle. Two guide wires are placed on the slots of the aiming arm to check the depth of nail insertion 
so that two hip screws can be inserted within the femoral neck. The distal wire should be near the inferior cortex of the femoral neck, otherwise there would be no room for the proximal hip screw. To ensure correct antiversion of the implant, a guide wire is inserted through the groove of the insertion handle and checked with the image intensifier. If necessary, the nail is rotated to place the wire centrally in the femoral neck. The yellow protection sleeve, drill sleeve and trocar are assembled. The assembly is inserted through the caudal aiming sleeve holder in the aiming arm marked RICO in yellow and is advanced to the bone through a stab incision. The trocar is removed. A 3.2mm guide wire is inserted through the drill sleeve and the tip of the guide wire is advanced to the level of the subchondral bone. In a clinical situation, the depth and antiversion are checked under image intensification in an AP and a true lateral view. It is especially important that the lateral image confirms that the K wire has entered the interlocking tunnel. A second drill sleeve assembly is inserted through the cranial aiming sleeve holder. It is important that no force is exerted on the aiming arm in this step. The trocar is removed and a 3.2mm guide wire is inserted. The caudal drill sleeve is removed. The length of the guide wire is measured with the direct measuring device. Make sure the tip of the protection sleeve touches the bone. Otherwise the measurement would be inaccurate. In this exercise, the length of the caudal hip screw is 95mm. The cranial drill sleeve is removed and the length of the guide wire is measured with the direct measuring device. This time a 90mm long hip screw is used. The caudal guide wire is now removed. To set the measured length for the screw on the 4.5-6.5 mm reamer, the fixation sleeve is fixed in the corresponding position. The length must be read off the side that points towards the tip of the reamer. The reamer is guided through the protection sleeve to the bone and drilled to the stop on the reamer. The position of the reamer is verified in the AP view. The reamer is removed. The hip screw is connected to the long T25 star drive screwdriver. The hip screw is inserted and the position of the screw is verified in the AP and lateral views. The same procedure is followed for the cranial hip screw. This time a 90mm long hip screw is used. The connecting screw is loosened and the insertion handle and the aiming arm are removed. To insert the end cap, the cannulated T40 star drive screwdriver and the 2.8mm guide wire with hook are needed. The end cap is fixed on the end of the screwdriver. The blunt end of the guide wire is slid through the end cap and the screwdriver. The hook of the guide wire secures the end cap during insertion. To minimise the chance of cross-threading, the end cap is turned anti-clockwise until the thread of the end cap aligns with that of the nail. Then the end cap is turned clockwise to thread it into the nail. The screwdriver and the guide wire are removed. To remove the implants, the following instruments are needed. The 3.2mm guide wire, the cannulated T40 star drive screwdriver, the extraction screw, the hammer guide, the combination wrench, the T25 star drive screwdriver and the combined hammer. The guide wire and screwdriver are inserted into the end cap. The guide wire makes finding the end cap easier. The end cap is removed. The hip screws remain in place while the extraction screw is attached. This prevents rotation of the nail in the canal as the extraction screw is tightened. The hammer guide is attached to the extraction screw. The hip screws are removed with the screwdriver. The combined hammer is mounted onto the hammer guide and the nail is extracted with gentle blows of the hammer. This presentation has shown the clinical indications the pre-operative planning, 
the patient position and surgical approach, the insertion and locking of the nail, and implant removal.